Hello, folks, and we are here with a Lorcana, the first chapter set review. Set has been out for a little bit of time now, and I, I didn't really get into the whole, like, well, let me predict how, what these cards are going to do beforehand, especially because it took us so long to know what the rules were, so I didn't want to just guess at a bunch of stuff I didn't understand. However, have, you know, gotten to play the game quite a bit now, <laughs> maybe not with actual cards so much because they're very difficult to find, but... You know, whether using different methods have gotten to test a lot of these cards, and so I kind of wanted to just go through them, give my thoughts on them. Uh, this is the first chapter, so because of that, there is a lot of filler. There are a lot of cards that just don't have text. I'll mostly move past those, unless there's something in particular to actually talk about. Uh, but, you know, other than that, let's just jump right into it. So Amber is going to be our first element here. Uh, first, we have Ariel, who's a four cost. I do like that she can quest for two uh, did she need to not be able to sing songs? I don't know. Like, th obviously, that's that's thematic, but I don't think that... Like, essentially, this is one of the few cards that actually has text that just hurts her. If she just didn't have that text, she'd be a 4 cost, 3-4 that, that quest for 2, which is, is fine. You know, I, I don't think that would have been overpowered for her to be able to sing. I think it's legit just, you know, it, it's thematic with the character. Uh, but so she's she's fine. Uh, next we have other arable Ariel who can sing for five. And I, I with just playing with the starter decks originally, I didn't put a lot of stock in that. Like someone who could sing for five, the starter decks don't really have five cost songs. But once you get into the full set and you get things like grab your sword or a whole new world to steal songs, being able to just exert Ariel to be able to sing that for free is really nice, especially as a three cost. Uh, what's funny is I don't think I've ever seen someone actually get a song off of her entry effect, the musical debut. <laughs> uh, probably just because, you know, there's only really so much space you can have for your songs and it only looks four cards deep. So she's good if you want to do a bunch of big things. Otherwise, she's fine. Uh, Cinderella, again, can sing five, which is fine. She's a two five. She can quest for two. I've never really seen her remove three damage from a chosen princess character happen much. Um, there is a Jasmine we'll talk about later in Sapphire that I like a lot better for that, as she just does it to the whole board while you're questing, whereas this Cinderella, you essentially have to give up her quest effect to do that, unless you are playing her with Ruby and you can ready her with something like Shield of Virtue. Um, but healing in general is just kind of a, a strange mechanic, and I'll talk about that a little more as we get into a few other of the healing cards. But I, she, she's okay. She was a card I was happy to cut, though, uh, once I was able to. Goofy, I, I do have a soft spot for. I have a Three Musketeers deck, so I have been working with him a lot. I do like that he has six health, and the three attack is quite nice. It can trade out to a lot of things, and it can, even if like a five, uh, a five attack comes in for you, like an Aladdin, a 5-5, five, five, at least he's hitting it back for 3, which is quite nice. I will say, though, his entry effect, the N2 for T, I just have so much trouble getting that to go off. Because usually, at least the way I play my Musketeers, Goofy is almost always the first one I get out. Uh, a lot of times I'll cheat him out with just in time. I, I think the idea is like, oh, well, Donald goes out on turn 4, they hit Donald, and then Goofy comes in and heals Donald. But I just, in practice, that pretty much doesn't happen. So that's my only kind of downside on him is I just don't think his entry does very much. He's a card though that maybe in the future will get stronger if we can get more Musketeers. So Hades, King of Olympus. Uh, I don't like this card at all. I think he's currently quite terrible. He's uninkable as an 8 cost which is already insane. You pretty much have to shift him in on top of like this lower Hades or just any other Hades for 6 so that he can immediately quest and like the idea is there that he gets plus 1 for every other villain you have in play and I've built some decks around it it's just so hard to maintain a board of that size to have all these villains so that you shift him in he can immediately quest for potentially 4 or 5 or 6 I really think he should have gotten an extra one himself or had a base of 2 because having to pay 8 for an uninkable card that with, with no help, like, Lord, if your board gets cleared by a Be Prepared and you have to put a blank Hades out there, he just quests for one. Like, yeah, he's a 6-7, which is, is fine, but you're not trying to attack with him. You're trying to quest with him, so. Right now, I think this card is a huge dud and a big waste of time. However, uh, potentially as more villain characters come out, maybe he'll get better in the future. His younger is a, a smaller self by half is a lot better as you can get any character card back from your discard to your hand. 
sucks he's on inkable but i i do think right now there's very limited recursion in this game so that effect i think is strong enough to warrant that so he's a good card hey hey uh these you know these i don't know this whole support effect is sometimes it's very good depending on the card i don't think hey hey really works like he's in the starter deck i think his issue is just one attack very rarely is going to be the difference between you know, something being an attack finishing off a character and it not. Sometimes it will, but I mean, he's, he's, he's fine if you have nothing else, but I, I cut him easily. Uh, this LeFou, I actually haven't seen anyone play. He's one less if you have a Gaston in play, but is there even... Let's look, see what Gastons there are. Yes, so there's currently one Gaston <laughs> who is also a two cost, so it implies you want to play Gaston on turn two. And then LeFou on turn three, but essentially you'd still have two open. I mean, he does quest for two. That's nice. But yeah, not not great. There's, there's better cards in Amber that do the same thing. Uh, of course, again, maybe better in the future if we get better Gaston cards. Lilo is excellent. This is this is like your premier form of aggro if you're running Amber. Yeah, she's uninkable, but there's a good reason. Yeah, she's a 1-1, one, one, but again, she quests for two, and she, you can put her down on turn one, and then you just put out something like Simba to protect her. The Lilo Simba is like very classic, op or not classic, but it's a really strong opening, uh, aggressive play if you're in these colors. Maximus, I actually really like a lot. My friend turned me on to him that he he is a card I think support makes sense that you quest, which turns on bodyguard anyway. You want him to be exerted so that they have to attack him for bodyguard. And giving four attack to something is huge. Now, like again, this LeFou suddenly could take out uh, a five uh, defense character if you had to willpower you know so this maximus i like a lot more and it's inkable this one's fine too this other maximus uh again it's really nice to be able to turn a 2-2's attack power into zero and then you can essentially hit it with your own 2-2 and not lose yours in return so like this maximus as well mickey is solid you know most three cost a three cost with a three three is usually going to quest for one so the fact that he quests for two is quite nice uh, he is just a body, though, so you're probably going to cut him from in favor of cards that actually have effects. But the fact that he does quest for two at least gives him noteworthy. Uh, Minnie Mouse, nothing to say about her. Moana is fine. She seemed a lot better than just the starter when there was less like removal and interaction. If you play a full deck, it's a lot easier to get rid of her. I do like the idea of... I do like her in a princess deck that, again, you can quest with Moana, or let's say you quest with Cinderella up there, and then Moana readies her, then Cinderella can do her heal, or they can challenge after that. That's cool. There's not really a lot of great fighting princesses right now, so maybe if, when those come out, Moana will be a bit better. And also the fact that she only has one attack is pretty bad. Like, the six defense is great, the six willpower, but it just made there's so many things that can attack her and they don't even die in return and you don't ever want to be attacking with Moana. So, yeah, yeah, she, she's fine, but definitely a little weaker than I first thought. Smee, you know, good stats, but no effects. Uh, Philip, I thought read well, but when this character challenges and is banished, you may banish the challenge. Yeah, ideally, if Philip is attacking something for three. You, you hopefully just want to be killing it anyway. If he was inkable, I think you might see this a little more, especially because he does quest for two, which is quite nice. But an uninkable that <laughs> he, he has to die too for his main effect to go off. Eh, I don't know. And he's not like, you know, we'll see some cards in Emerald that they quest for two and like the Cheshire Cat, they'll banish if you attack them and you kind of have to attack them because they quest for so much. But Philip, there's no penalty when you attack him, so... Uh, Pumbaa is just there. Rapunzel is great. This is probably one of the best cards in Amber, uh, and there's a reason it's a super legendary. Not only is the quest for two nice, it is it is very easy to at least get two card draw off of that. If you get the full three, you just feel excellent. Uh, yeah, her attack power is terrible, but it doesn't matter. She's there to come in, heal something, and then draw three cards off of it, or even just two is, is great. So Rapunzel is very good. Sebastian is, I rarely see him. I think there's better singers too. There's people who can sing more. Simba is fantastic. Is a very cheap cost bodyguard. Again, the opening aggressive play in these colors is Lilo turn one, Simba turn two. They have to attack the Simba, can't hit the Lilo. 
Stitch. When you play this character, if you have two or more other characters in play, you may draw two cards. It sounds good. I've never seen anyone use it, though. People always use the big Rockstar Stitch. I feel like Rockstar Stitch you can kind of build around. This one, again, if you see it at the right time, that can be quite good. Uh, if you see it at the wrong time, however, he's just a seven-cost body. Four, eight, which is nothing to sneeze at, but generally... If you're paying seven for something, you you really want to be questing for three. Stitch here is just your, your generic, you know, one cost, two, two body. There's plenty of them in the set. Rockstar Stitch is really nice, especially that you can shift him in at four. Uh, he quests for three, so he, he is a big threat on his own. And if you can bring in a bunch of little cards, you just draw, 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 which feeds into the likelihood you'll have more low cost characters to continue the draw. So he's quite good. I think Tyrone is terrible. You just remove, he just heals a single damage. That's not very good. And he's a one cost too. So usually one cost, I mean, that's what you're going to be wanting to put out on turn one anyway. So it's very unlikely he'll be healing anyone at that point. He's not good. Be our guest. You know, for a card that technically should be good, I find myself throwing it away all the time. Uh, because you look at the top four, you reveal a character, put it in your hand put the rest on the bottom there's nothing wrong with that and it can be sung by a two cost character that's all fine i don't really like the reveal portion you know there's not a ton of hidden information in this game there's not like traps or anything you can set for your opponent and so sometimes having to reveal that oh that character is going to be coming in soon okay well i can kind of anticipate that so yeah it's not a bad card but i, I do find myself throwing it away control your temper is is fine for a starter but easily replaced so hakuna matata and healing glow i'll kind of talk about these in conjunction with dingle hopper just this whole healing thing um i think hakuna i think both the songs or the actions are terrible and dingle hopper is okay healing in general is just kind of weird in lorcana right now because for the most part usually when a character takes damage it takes lethal damage that that's the more common way of dealing with characters that when you're challenging a character it is to just get it off the field right then and there it's not really to your benefit to have to spend three turns attacking a character over and over and over again and then your opponent okay well I'll counter with all this healing stuff well and since you can't interact on your opponent's turn all this healing is meaningless again if your three willpower character just takes a three shot and dies immediately then there's nothing to heal Maybe healing as an idea will get better as the game goes on. I'm a little skeptical of that. I think something like even Dinglehopper could be good if you could do it on your opponent's turn. You know, let's say they play a big Tinkerbell, one to the board, now they're going to come in for that challenge. And if you could pop that one off with the Dinglehopper before she hits, I think that'd be very good. But currently, especially it being limited to your turn, it, it's just not really worth it. Uh, and it, it just doesn't come up often enough, I think, to invest in these cards. So, yeah, all the healing stuff, not super high on. Just in Time is absolutely great on turn three. Tends to fall off more after that, especially since it's uninkable. But if you can get out a Goofy or some other five cost uh, card character exactly on turn three, it's a very, very strong card. Uh, part of your world is like. It's okay. I, I don't see it used a whole lot. It is recursion, but it's uninkable, and you have to be really careful how much uninkable you put into a set, so I, I don't see this one very often. Uh, you've forgotten me. I thought this card would be cool when I first played it, but at least in Lorcana, it's just... It's... It just doesn't come up a whole a, a lot. Like, usually by the time you get to that, to the it's a four cost, that one, I would rather be getting a body out, you know, some sort of character than making my opponent discard two, and, and then kind of beyond that, people are usually top decking anyway, unless you're in some kind of amethyst deck where you can just draw, draw, draw. You tend to not really have cards in hand anyway, so yeah, this one currently I don't think is very good. Maybe it could get better in the future. Lantern is quite nice. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what the best deck for Lantern is, but it is useful, and sometimes it does have those turns where it's like, oh, I, I needed, you know, I was, I was going to be one ink short, but the Lantern covered that, so... Uh, I, I don't think it's a must-have necessarily, but I think if you are in amber, if you're in these colors, I think it's the best item you could have. Um, Ursula's Shell Necklace, again, I think right now this kind of sucks. It's it's three and it's uninkable, and then you have to pay every time on top of that, and it's only when you do a song. Would probably get better in the future as we get more songs into the game. But let's say you're just in this color. Of course, you're going to combine with another color. There's what? One, two, three three songs so 
Yeah, even if you stocked up on all those, that's just not many chances to see that. And since there's no search in this game either, a card like this, you know, you have to see this before you sing the song. So, yeah, I just think this card's in a crappy place. Uh, Amber, in general, I think is overall kind of a weak element, and especially for the healing stuff, but we'll see. Amethyst, arguably the strongest element. Uh, I, I think it is. I think Ruby obviously gives it a run for its money, especially removal, but this is this is where all your card draws from. Ana, it's too hard to get Ana out when there's already an Elsa in play, um, but again, potentially could get stronger in the future if if more of these more of these card names get printed. Right now, not worth it. Archimedes, your standard 2-2. Facilier, I liked a lot to start, but I actually think this card's quite weak. Maybe if you can shift it into, shift it on turn five. And I wonder too, the thing, because here's the problem with this card is that the idea is great, right? The idea is that any of your other characters that die, you just get them back. They don't go to the bin. You can replay them over and over again. However, in practice, people will just kill Dr. Facilier. You want to quest with him because he has three. Or if they're playing something like Ruby, they'll just hit him with a dragon fire and he's gone. And then the moment he's gone... They can freely attack everything else. Maybe if you put him, combined him with a bodyguard deck, again, you do Amber Amethyst or Amethyst Steel, and you put out all these bodyguard characters, and assuming they don't have removal, which the most prominent deck in the game currently is all about, it's, it's non-attacking removal, and they're forced to hit all these bodyguards that keep coming to your hand, and you replay them over and over again. Like I like the idea of that, but it just sounds... It's so much to get to work, and yeah, they, they can just. I feel like they circumvent him very easily. This facilier is okay. Challenger is just kind of strange. Like, obviously, it's great when you're attacking, but opponents can really exploit this too. That he has zero attack, so if he's challenged or exerted, you can just hit him a bunch of times with no, you know, repercussions. So I, I don't know. I'm never sure what to like hit him in particular too, just because he has zero. Some other challengers actually have some attack. Um, but because he has zero, that kind of makes me not like him. But I still put him in some decks, so yeah, I'm kind of in the middle of the road on him. This other one, again, like with uh, the necklace above it, maybe if we get more songs, he'll get better in the future. This Elsa's blank. This Elsa can be quite nice. Actually, it's one of the few ways you can, if you absolutely have to challenge a character, you know, hey, they're going to win next turn when they quest, and you can't normally attack it because it's, it's ready, which is very frustrating, and I feel like a lot of Lorcana games can come down to that. This Elsa being able to, nope, I can set it up so you can able challenges. Quite nice. I've come to really appreciate this one. Uh, this Elsa's great. One of the best super legendaries in the game. Uh, big old deep freeze, a dull freeze, if you know Final Fantasy TCG. Uh, yeah, it's an inkable. Yeah, it costs eight, but it, it should because, and it's worth it. And she quests for three. Her body isn't terrible either. Like, four, she can return... Uh, death on a lot of stuff six you know a lot of five attackers can't defeat her great great card if you're playing amethyst you have to be playing that card flotsam and i'll talk about him with jetsam yeah i like it I, the evasive tends to not come up too too much uh, it does give amethyst a, a you know access to evasive which i don't know why it needs that because it already has so much as well i don't know why this this color seems to get so many different effects uh but yeah i like flotsam and jetsam did flotsam need to be uninkable Eh, I don't think he did. I I don't think a 3-4 with Rush. Yeah, he quests for two, but again, he can't do that. Turn he comes in anyway. Like, I, I don't... That costs five. I, I don't think that needed to be uninkable, but they're fine. They're, they're a fun little combo. Jafar. This one I have seen the power of. If you have things like the Magic Mirror, you have a draw engine to keep your hand healthy. He's quite good. Uh, otherwise, he's a bit poor. This Jafar I've really come to appreciate, especially a thing like uh, the Rabbit's Pocket Watch where you can haste him out. Him I like a lot more as a champ, just because hitting something for five, some decks really struggle with that. That, hey, I've got to get rid of this body, but it's it's got four or five defense or higher, and I just don't have a whole lot that can take that out in one hit. Jafar is really nice about that. And while two isn't amazing on return attack, it's something. It's better than this facilier's like zero, so there's at least some threat with it. Uh, the brooms are fun. I have done a broom-Mickey combo, and it is really fun when it works. Uh, beyond that, you know, it's, it's it's beyond. If it weren't for the Mickey, it's a terrible card, right? It costs one extra. Yeah, you can put something back into your deck, but what are the odds you're actually going to see it? Maleficent, just like Lilo, really good aggro card. 
Uh, this Maleficent's really, really good. Just card draw is, is very low in this first chapter, so anything that lets you draw a card. Plus, she can sing Friends on the other side, being a three cost, which is a very potent combo. Uh, Marshmallow is quite bad. If he's banished in a challenge, you get him back. But again, if they hit him with something like Dragonfire, he doesn't come back. And he's if he wasn't uninkable, I think I would like this card a lot better. But there's so many better cards that are uninkable to be playing in these colors. Elsa being one, Rafiki, Ursula. So if he was inkable, I think I'd try him. This is Mickey. The broom combo is quite fun, especially if you can get two Mickeys out. You can play your brooms. I have a deck right. I have, you can get two Mickeys out. You play a broom. I've got the pocket watch and it can immediately challenge. And, and you can send these brooms into these cards over and over again because they just come back to your hand and then you just replay them with the Mickey. So quite fun. Olaf's your standard uh, one cost one three. Real quick, tiny debate on the one three body for one versus the two two body uh for one like archimedes which one's better i used to value the one three but my friend was talking about it too that i don't know there's just a lot of situations where like if a two two attacks this yes i can return attack but then they'll both trade anyway just as if they were a two two uh he's still gonna die to things like hook or prince eric that challenge for three and the just one attack really just doesn't do much unless you happen to be fighting a Lilo, this baby Maleficent, Pascal, etc. Pascal, by the way, excellent, quite like this card. Yes, incredibly weak stats, but just the fact that he gets evasive by any other body being on the field and being a one cost. You know, later in the game, it's a lot easier to get rid of stuff, but early on, very difficult to just get a body off the field, and you can just leave that other body ready and let Pascal quest away. Rafiki's very good. Again, I don't know why this color has Rush, but it does. Uh, and he's a 3-3 three, three, on turn 3. Uninkable, but it doesn't matter because he's really good at coming in and just picking off something you don't need to. Sven's just a big body. Queen is obviously great. Not only are her body stats good, the fact that she can just threaten to sit there and draw cards over and over again. You probably don't even want to quest with her because she only quests for one, but repeated card draws is incredibly strong. Wardrobe is... is if you don't have anything better to play for the stat line, a 3-4 four for 3 is acceptable. Again, it's one of the better ones in the starter deck, but obviously there's way better cards to tag her out for once you get them. Maybe if we get better Peter Pans, this Tinkerbell could be a little better, but it's only a challenger. It's challenger plus 1, so it's only while he's challenging. Like If it was just a permanent plus 1 buff, maybe that would help some Peter Pan card, but... I mean, yeah, it's evasive, but it's uninkable for five. Mm, I don't think so. Ursula, however, is quite good. Essentially reads, you draw a card and they lose a lore. Generally, losing a single lore isn't too huge in this game. But beyond that, she quests for three. And her being an eight defensive body, like, that's just absurd. I think, what, is Simba? I think the only natural attacker that can get rid of her in one shot. Otherwise, you pretty much have to commit multiple people to her or you have to do a dragon you know, a, a dragon fire or whatever. So, uh, Ursa, again, Amethyst got two great super legendary cards. Great. Uh, Yzma, I like quite a bit. Again, technically a little over costed, but she does let you scry every time. Quite good. Zeus, I do have a bit of a soft spot for, her, but he's probably a bad card. Like, I like Rush and Challenger plus four is cool. And he quests for two, it's just that he's uninkable. Like, I don't know. I guess maybe they thought he would have been too strong if he could have been inked, but, mm. if, but see, that's that's also the difference between me playing him and me not playing him is that if he could be inked, I would play him. He can't be inked, and there's too much better stuff to play that can't be inked, so gone he goes. Befuddle is just fine. Most of the one-cost actions tend to not be super strong. Freeze would be great if you could do it on your opponent's turn, but since you can't, having to do it on your turn... And it's uninkable. No, I don't like the card at all. Friends on the other side is great. A draw to can be sung. Uh, again, drawing cards is great. It's obviously, uh, it is this element's best song. Reflection I've never even seen anyone use. I, I don't really know what the purpose of this is. Look at the top three, and then you just put them back in any order. Okay, but you have things like Yzma and Ursula's Cauldron. Like It, it would be one thing if that was the only access we had to kind of like scrying or, or peering into our card future, but... Yeah, we have so many others, so this card's worthless. Uh, Magic Mirror is fantastic. Repeated card draw, especially later in the game when everyone's usually just top decking, is 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 one of the many things that just makes this element just the strongest element in the game. 
especially paired with Ruby. Like, and the mirror is a big part of that. Yeah, it's uninkable, but who cares? Because that draw is just huge. And four seems like a lot, and it is, especially early, beginning, later. You're just top decking anyway, so you tend to have a ton of ink you're not using. So you can get multiple mirrors out and just go, go, go. Ursula's Cauldron, I kind of overlooked when I first started the game, but I've seen people really put it to good use that you're essentially... Again, there's nothing in this game currently that like mills cards off your opponent's deck, and maybe there never will be. So because of that, you're pretty safe to always know what you've got coming up, and that can really inform your turns. And there's no cost to it. That's kind of crazy to me that there's no cost to that. And I get it. You're not technically getting a card, but yeah. Uh, this is quite good. The pocket watch is also quite good. Again, I don't know why this element has the ability to give anyone rush. Really good with cards like Jafar that are great at challenging, but have to wait a turn. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's three. Uh, all three of these items are good. Like, Amethyst is far and away the best element. Moving on to Emerald, which is a very interesting element because I think it has some of the strongest cards in the game and some of the worst and weakest. Uh, Aladdin, the ward's fine, but he's, he's literally there to shift into the other Aladdin when you're playing Ruby. Other than that, he doesn't do anything. Beast, I, I liked it first because I thought, okay, you know, you just kind of, you, you exert the entire board and he can attack right away. You know, he comes down and he just runs in there. Like, that's a cool idea, but he costs five and he's uninkable and he, he, he only has a four, four stat line. Like I really think he should have had a five, five, if not a six, six stat line or six, five or something, but four, four is just too weak. And then I didn't, I didn't read the card correctly. He only exerts damaged characters, which pretty much implies you have to play him with steel. So you can like big Tinkerbell or, or grab, or grab your swords. Like really grab your swords is, is what pairs with the beast. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> the beast comes in, grab my swords, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, so I haven't seen him used once. It's not hard to see why. Like, it's a cool idea, but it should just exert the board. Like, there's no reason why it has to be damaged only for a five-cost uninkable. So they missed the mark with this guy. Cheshire Cat is great. Uh, yeah, he can die to something like a dragon fire or if they have any kind of, you know, bounce effect. But challenging, he isn't going to take out the thing that kills him. So quite nice uh, they, they can play around that a little bit if like you know you have a two whatever hit him and then you finish him off something really weak but still the fact that he will get something is value for you and he's a two cost quest he's a two quester so they're gonna want to hit him cruella is fine uh, i don't know it, because she only quests for one i find it very easy to ignore her so very little times will i go after her and again otherwise you can just hit her with some removal uh, Duke's a blank. Uh, same, uh, Flynn is like with the Cheshire Cat. Like, Flynn and Cheshire Cat, because they quest for two, you have an incentive to want to get rid of them, whereas I don't really think you do with Corella with just a one. Uh, and Flynn, you know, is going to make them discard. Yeah, it kind of sucks that he only attacks for one, but that, that's not what you're playing it for. You're playing aggressive to do your one cost. Flynn turn two, Cheshire turn three. You're getting two. Yeah, he, Flynn won't trade out whatever is hitting him, but he's going to rip a card out of their hand. And especially early, if they decide to do that, that can be very impactful. So he's good. This genie is like, the bounce effect is okay. It depends what they're bouncing. If you're bouncing something like Flynn or Cheshire, where they have to replay it and wait a whole turn to quest, great. If you're bouncing something with an entry effect, like a Maleficent that draws them a card, not so great. You're just kind of helping them out. And then he's a six cost uninkable with three, four. I mean, I get he's evasive, but yeah, I, I don't think this needed to be uninkable. And I think this is overcosted. Uh, same with this genie. I tried to build an entire deck around it. It's it's too expensive and just it's so hard. I, I built it with Ruby, and you have this idea. Oh, he'll quest. I'll cast Dragonfire for free, but you have to have the cards in your hand, and you have to wait to minimum turn six to shift this guy in. It's just yeah, he, it's just not there. Maybe in the future, as we get more actions, he'll get a little better, or if there's better card draw than just an Amethyst. But right now, it's just that card sucks. That one's blank. Hans is, you know, uh, quite good, actually. Quest for three on a four. Yeah, his body's a bit weak, but he can likely take something out with him, and they have to address him. So he's a great uh, fourth turn follow-up to Cheshire Cat here. Horus is blank, forgettable. Iago, he can give something reckless, like, eh. I don't know. I don't think Reckless... I guess I'll take a moment to talk about Reckless, since, but I know that's going to come up here with, like, John Silver. So we'll just kind of talk about these together. Because John Silver's whole thing, the Reckless, 
it, it's when he plays and I don't know. So I, I think the idea with Reckless, right, is that I think the idea is that you can make favorable trades for yourself, right? I'm going to make that one cost Lilo that wants to just sit there and quest forever, that Pascal that wants to hit. I'm going to give it Reckless instead. Now it can't quest. Now it has to attack into my 5-5 five, five body, so it just kills itself. It commits suicide. I think that's the idea behind it, or that if I can give something Reckless, again, your your enchanted bell that was going to quest for five, well, suddenly now it can't do that, and it's forced to... I, I understand the idea. It just doesn't seem to work out that way in practice. Uh, I think there's just better things to do. It's one of those... Hey, if you're willing to jump through hoop A and then into hoop B and then somersault through hoop C, we'll give you a 50% prize. It's like, or I can just play Ruby Amethyst and have a 100% prize and, and it's not that hard. Like, this is one of those many mechanics that are in a lot of TCGs that they want you to do all this effort for a reward that's not worth it. So, not a reckless fan. Uh, Jasper, I like. He's quite good in the starter. Maybe not as good after that, but again, it's it's really nice to show off something questing, which can be quite good. Uh, Jumba is just a big body. Cusco's broken. This this the card has way too much text on it. It is uninkable, thank goodness. But his body kind of doesn't matter. He has ward, so you can't blast him. You know, you can't just get rid of him with a dragon fire. The only way to get rid of him with a cha is with a challenge, and he quests for three. So you're going to want to do that. But then he also just kills whatever challenges him, like. Yeah, he's kind of busted. Maybe he's on the right side of busted, but that's uh, it's definitely an annoying problem card. Uh, Lady Tremaine, again, tried to kind of build her with the genie deck. I understand recursion is strong, but she already cost six. She didn't need to be on inkable. Like, you could absolutely ink a card. And she's a 1-5. This, this one's overstated. Hatter, like Cusco, is good. Unlike Cusco, doesn't have ward, so Hatter can fall victim to things like Dragonfire, uh, and then he's not going to get any of his effects. However, if they have to challenge him, uh, you get to draw a card. So as long as he quests once and they challenge him once, then you, you've, you, he's, he's paid for himself at that point. And any cards you can get beyond that is just awesome. Uh, Megara, again, the, these, these kind of like attack manipulation effects, whether it's, oh, you lose two this turn or I gain two this turn, can be good, but they're just very situational because if you play Megara on turn two, for her to like, for that plus two attack to have mattered, you had to have essentially have gone first, or, or I guess that order, but either way, on your first turn, you had to have put out a character that can then attack on the second turn, has to have a target to attack, and that it would benefit from that plus two that early in the game. So, yeah, I, I don't find her to be that great. This Mickey, I actually haven't seen anyone use. Again, with cards like Cusco, I think there's just better things to do with your uninkable slots. Yeah, he can be shifted in, which is nice. A again, there's just not a ton of actions either, so the idea that you get this Mickey on the board and then you play an action on top of it, he's already asking you to pay seven for him, even five on a shift. Eh, that just seems like a lot. Maybe in the future. Uh, this Mickey's just the wardrobe. Gothel's really cool. It's nice to have just this field effect that says, nope, you can't quest, and she's a big six defensive body, and she can be inked. Like, why can this be inked and Lady Tremaine can't? I, I don't get it. Uh, I get that's a, that's a theme for a lot of these cards. Like, I understand why Cusco can't be inked. Why can't this Mickey be inked? But Gothel can be? I don't know. But she's a cool... Like, there's probably better things to do uh, with the element. But it's cool. I, and I've seen a few decks use her to pretty good success. Peter's just whatever. Tamato I actually like kind of quite a bit just because he has four defense, but he's still just a blank body. Uh, Tinkerbell, I think, is good for her own evasive... I, giving an evasive to your character this turn means you have to have a character that can attack and it needs another evasive character to attack to make that relevant at all. So do it again is just kind of pointless right now. Maybe something will make it worth it in the future, but you're spending it's uninkable, which is makes no sense. And you're spending three to get back another action and then you have to play that action. So if you want to do it again into mother knows best, that's six and they're two uninkable cards. Like, eh, it's asking a lot. Uh, Mother Knows Best is, is fine. It's probably this element's best action, but I think that says more about its lack of good actions than than how strong this one necessarily is. But, you know, especially early, if they if they put out like a Hans, if you're going second, their turn four, they put out a Hans or something, and then your turn three, you just, whoop, send it back, make them pay for it again. Not terrible. 
uh, unlike Stampede, which is absolutely terrible. Uh, there's a card in Steel called Fire the Cannons, which also is a one uninkable and just deals two damage. This only deals two damage to a damage character. Why couldn't it be three? Like, it makes no sense to have it have the same rate as Fire the Cannons, except it's got a caveat on it. Like, that makes no sense. Terrible, terrible card. I like the idea of Steel from the Rich, but again, it, it asks a lot of you, right? Can't be inked. Can't be done till turn five. You have to have enough character. Like, you probably need minimum two characters to quest when you use it. I don't think one character questing makes it worth it. So you have to have at least two. If you have three, they lose three lore. But again, if you sometimes people, depending on their playstyle, they don't even quest that early. So they might not even have the lore to take. Or it's only two. Like, if, if it could be inked, I'd like it a lot better. I don't even know if I'd play it if it could be inked. That should tell you something. And the fact that it's uninkable is, is bad design. Uh, sudden Chill, again... There's better things you can be doing than making them discard a single card of their choice, uh, you know, with a turn two slot. So discard just doesn't seem there yet. Maybe it never will be. Uh, the beast is mine. Again, it's, it costs three just to give something reckless, which means they have to have a target potentially. Or maybe you just use it to stop the questing. Maybe you don't even have to have a target. But really, is that what I want to spend my turn three on? If this was like a repeatable item, I'd like it a little better, but... It's just an action? Nah. Nah. Speaking of which, I didn't realize Emerald only had one item. It's his cards, uh, Fresilia's cards. And again, maybe in the future this will be great if, if we get more actions. Right now, I just don't think there's enough actions there to make this one worth it. And it only affects the next one you play anyway. So, like, maybe if you're playing Emerald Ruby and you absolutely have to get be prepared out on turn 6 versus turn 7 beyond that... I don't know what you do. Vicious Betrayal, just like Megara, like these one-time attack buffs. Especially when you can't do them on your opponent's turn. They're only just, like, they're just only really so good. Uh, I actually almost missed the scimitar there because I saw the red background. But no, there's an emerald card. Uh, again, plus one attack, which is permanent, also specifically helps Aladdin, which is, like, cute, I guess. But yeah, it's just there. Again, ge generally... Uh, at least so far, it's not like, oh man, I just can't beat these things in a challenge. I'm lacking damage. So until that becomes an issue, this card probably won't see much play. Abu is, he's fine. He's just blank. This Aladdin is freaking broken, especially if you can shift it in. If you can shift this in on this Aladdin or the green one, his on attack effect is just ridiculous that he's a 5-5. So he deals with pretty much everything in the game, especially on turn five. And then you don't even need to quest with him because he gains two lore and steals two from you. It just feels so messed up, especially on turn five. Again, if you had to wait to seven and then he's got to sit there a turn, he's not as bad. But when he can shift in and, and make that swing, it's just it's so brutal. It's so brutal. And then being a five five, chances are even if you attack him, yeah, he won't get the lore trade, but he probably is going to kill whatever you attack him with. So card's rough. Uh, and this Aladdin 2 is a nice little setup for him. Yeah, he's a little overcosted, but he steals a lure. That's good. Captain's Blank. Hook. Rush. I've never actually even seen anyone use this card. With a, you know, the, again, kind of a neat idea. The idea that it, it, like, turns off evasive. I like the idea, but he costs seven. And he's uninkable, and there's no way to shift him on, so... That, that's just too... And, and it's while he's exerted. So, I mean, I guess the idea is he comes in on turn sevens, you rush now these evasive characters, but, uh, I mean, you have to be playing evasive characters, so it's just he's way too specific. Donald, I don't like this art, and he's just a blank. Uh, here's an Elsa again that works with the Ana, but good luck lining that up. Gaston, I, I have tried him. I don't know. The four attack is great. The reckless kind of sucks. The two and the two defenses, I think, really what nails uh, kills this card for me. It's just he just dies to everything. There's so very little that he can attack that he's forced to attack that he's gonna live through. And, and if you're taking out something huge, if you're taking out like a Goofy, not that he could challenge Goofy, but let's say he could, or this Elsa, then you don't really care about the two. But because he's a turn two card, there's just very little that that needs this kind of uh, attack power to deal with it early. Goofy's fine. A little expensive, but he's evasive and he quests for two. I like that. Uh, LeFou is quite nice. You can quest with something early and then ready it so it can't be challenged on the counterpunch. So that's really good. 
Maleficent's great. Probably the best effect on a singular body as it just gets rid of any character on the field, which is ridiculous. Yeah, her own body isn't great, but she hits for seven, so she's going to trade anything out. So she essentially is going to kill two things. Quest for two on her own is not bad and is inkable. Why? Okay. Uh, Maui actually is good. This is reckless done right just because he has rush. Like, you pretty much... And he hits so hard that he can come in on turn five, especially if you've gone first and they've got a four cost and you just, bam, hit him right away. Uh, so Maui is quite good. Mickey's the best lore quester in the game. And he's evasive. He's expensive, but he should be expensive. And you'll need stuff like Dragonfire to get rid of him. Because uh, otherwise he come, just comes down and basically says, well, time for me to win the game. And he's inkable. Why is this card inkable? I mean, I think he should be. I like that he's inkable. I think more stuff should be inkable. I think they really did way too many uninkable cards for no reason. Minnie's a blank. Moana, I mean, I guess if you know they're playing a Takai deck, maybe she's good, but I don't even understand why Takai has as many cards as it does. That's barely a character in that movie. Mulan, I've tried to build around. It's a cool idea, but again, she doesn't have Rush by her own. She has to banish, which she hits for four, which is just kind of eh. And then all your other characters get uh, questing lore, which implies you have a bunch of characters. So, like, a eh, cool idea. And and if you can give her a rush with, like, the pocket watch, I definitely like her a bit better. But a bit, bit too pie in the sky to make real good use of it. Peter is, I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense he's uninkable because it's similar to Rafiki. But Rafiki also has an extra attack. Yeah, why is this just a worse Rafiki? I don't get it. Uh, Pongo I like. Quest for two, evasive, Nice. Rapunzel I originally did really like, but I actually think this card's quite weak. Now, again, this is a card that just taking a single lore isn't that great. It works on Ursula because Ursula also draws you a card off of it, and she quests for three. But Rapunzel, for almost the exact same cost, and she can't be inked, just simply takes a single lore. Yeah, she quests for two, and her stats aren't nearly as good as Ursula's. Like, if she was cheaper, if she was a four cost... I would definitely think like her, maybe even a five cost, but especially Red Ruby has so many good uninkable choices. Like, you don't have time for this. The Scar, I don't like at all. The Scar, I mean, again, in theory, if you have a bunch of little costs, you you can <laughs> you, you quest with all of them, and then Rousing Speech comes in and readies them, but he's an eight cost and inkable. Yeah, he can shift for six. That's, again, t there's there's just better stuff you can be doing in these colors than to try to build into stuff like that. Tibbs is blank. Stitch is just kind of, you know, he quests for three. He's just a big body. He's fine. Takai is reckless, but without rush. Uh, she hit, hits like a freaking truck, which is awesome. But again, you're in Ruby, which immediately kills stuff with one of the best cards in the game here in Dragonfire, so why would you need this? You, you don't want to spend uninkable slots on this. Tigger is too expensive. Uh, yeah, I think six is actually even too, even though it's evasive and two, you know, Pongo is evasive and two and cheaper. And, and, and like stats on evasive, for the most part, don't matter. Maybe they will in the future as we get more cards with evasive that they can challenge, but there doesn't tend to be a whole lot of evasive challenging in this game. So the, the stat line kind of is irrelevant. So yeah, Tigger's just a worse Pongo, in my opinion. Be prepared, arguably the best card in the game. It's the only board wipe the entire game has, so it's the only way to deal with someone going wide. And it can be sung, so... If you've got some massive singer out there, some really big character, you can just have exert them, wipe the board, and then do whatever else you want. Uh, yeah, so be prepared. It's incredible. As is Dragon Rush or Dragon Fire, obviously. Just get rid of anything on the board is absolutely absurd. And strong, and these cards should be uninkable. And yeah, we these cards are just it's the best removal in the game. Cut to the Chase, I think, is quite terrible. Having to pay two for a one-time rush... Which again also implies you have a card that can be rushed, so you had to have put out you had to have put out a character this turn without rush and have enough to then play this card on top of it and have something worth challenging. That's 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 the sequence this card fits in, which is why you don't see it because it's terrible. I mean, fan the flames. It's just it's just Lafu again, except you don't get the body attached to it, so I don't know why you would. Uh, you'll happily pay one extra to to have the body. I don't know why you would. Again, this would be great. If you could do it at instant speed on your opponent's turn, they go to challenge something, boom, you respond with Fan the Flames. Now it can't be challenged. But in a game where you can't do anything on your opponent's turn, it's terrible. He's got a sword, same thing. You know, it's just like uh, control your temper. Just not really a fan of these effects. Tangle is, again, 
it's just a single lore is very, very rarely going to make the difference between win and defeat. It's kind of cool to have an effect that steals lore, but it's just rarely going to come up. Poisoned Apple. If it's a princess character, banish her instead. Uh, again, like I like the theme, but okay, what if they're not playing princesses? Then that doesn't do anything. And then there's better ways to exert for cheaper. And it's uninkable. There's no reason this card should be uninkable. And you've got to pay extra on top of it. And you lose it. Like, if you could repeat it, yeah, maybe that's one thing, but not worth it. Uh, Shield of Virtue, actually quite good. Really good with a card like Aladdin up here. Big Aladdin that he can come in, challenge, and then you can ready him with Shield of Virtue so now he can't be killed in return. You know, or you can quest with the Mickey, ready it so it can't be challenged. So Shield of Virtue actually proved its worth. Haven't seen Sword of Truth once, <clears throat> and why would you? They have to have a villain to even to even use the card. Like, why? Why? It's a one-time use. It's when you have Dragonfire right above it, for one extra, get rid of anything. Or you can pay one less to put this on the field first to then only take out a villain. Like, nah. I'm good. If it, if it could be inked, I think maybe. But slots are already kind of tight in that list. But uninkable? Nah. I'm good. On to Sapphire. Arguably the weakest element. I think Amethyst and Ruby are definitely the two strongest ones. Sapphire, I think, is absolutely one of the weakest along with Amber. But it does have some cool stuff. Particularly this aerial and the whole item idea is fun. This aerial, there's no limit to how long she can quest, so you can do these big combos where she quests. You play an item, you're readier, you quest again, you play an item, you're readier, and with items like Eye of the Fates to give her even more questing, I've actually, my friend, OTK'd someone from 0 to 20 in one turn with this aerial because they just had the perfect lineup, so uh, really cool card. Uh, it probably deserves to be uninkable just because it has that potential. Aurora, again, just these whole instant one turn only, or just they're okay. But this Aurora too is it just kind of has the facilier problem. Like Ward is nice, except if they if they're playing Ruby or anything with removal, they just get rid of this Aurora, and now everything else is free to be blasted, and also everything else can still be challenged. So yeah, she's just okay. This Aurora I like quite a bit. I like a two cost with, even though she's blank, it's just nice to have a two 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 two. Bell is really nice. Fits in with the item theme. If you're going for that with this aerial. Enchanted Bell is okay. It's really satisfying when you can quest for five with her, which is a fourth of your, your quest in one turn, which is awesome. I really love that. Uh, but it can be really tough to get there, too, and to actually have cards left to do it. Chief Tui. Uh, Chief Two? I can't remember how they say his name in the movie. Um, but... Uh, the support is like, eh, whatever, but he quests for three. But three is still enough to probably make a difference. Bit expensive at seven. There's nothing to shift on him, but at least he's inkable. Still haven't seen him anywhere, so probably better stuff to do. This Donald is, is fine. Uh, the fact that he's strutting his stuff, man, I have a personal funny story about that. Flounder's a blank. Grumatalia, I, I really liked, and then I thought was kind of bad, and then now I think she's okay. Like, the whole ramp thing with Sapphire... The problem is if you don't pair it with Amethyst and card draw, it doesn't actually matter that you ramp to 8 ink, 9 ink on turn 5 because you generally probably aren't going to have anything to use on it unless you pair it with something like Amethyst card draw so that you actually have cards to take advantage of all this ink because cards like Gramatalia and Mickey that it's cool they help ramp up your ink well, but you have to have something worthwhile to spend it on, right? Uh, one thing I do love about Grandma Talia is she can sing one jump ahead, which I think is her best use. Uh, other than that, uh, when my opponent plays her, I usually just ignore her. And if they even, like, sacrifice her by challenging into something, whatever they get, she gets put in exerted, so they can't even use that right away, so it's kind of slow. Hades is, is one of the best cards in this element. Arguably the best card, as it's just the most clean removal. The, it's basically the most clean removal in the game outside of uh, Dragonfire. Now, granted, it technically helps your opponent by putting something into their inkwell face down, but because he's a 7, generally by the time he's going to come out, that's not going to make that much of a difference. You know, they've probably played their hand out at that point, so... Yeah, it is technically a bit of a downside, but it's it's just it's such a good effect, and then he's got a decent stat line and quest for a bit. Jasmine's fine. She's blank. I actually really love this Queen of Agrabah Jasmine. Again, healing tends to not be super great in this game so far, but I do love her repeated effect of healing the entire board. Quite nice, so I don't know how good this card actually is, but I just know that I like it.
This Maleficent, she's a blank body. This one, bigger blank body. Maurice, again, works really well with the item in the item deck. Outside of that, you're probably never using him. Although his seven body is nice. Merlin, uh, kind of a bit of a weaker support, but can be okay. Don't seem too often. Mickey, again, if you are going for the ramp, even though I don't know how good the whole ramp idea is, Mickey obviously fits quite well in there. Mufasa's a blank body. Phil, uh, in theory, makes sense. You quest, you give something three attack, which is a lot of attack, especially for a two cost. But man, I just hate that he's only got one defense. It's just any anything. Anything with attack power can is going to be able to deal with him, and that kind of sucks. Uh, Robin Hood is... Uh, like, the evasive... I get what they're going for, that he can attack other things with evasive. But he's only 4-4, four, four, and I've never gotten his feed the poor to, to go off. And granted, maybe I had him in the wrong pair. Like, maybe I had... You know, if I pair him with Amethyst... You're going to have more cards than they do, so maybe you want to pair them with something where you know they're going to have more cards in hand than you, but like, I don't know. He's just kind of bleh. Yeah, Scars, just whatever. Tamato is fun, again, in the item list specifically. Uh, outside that, he's just very expensive, but he can be inked at least. Triton's just a big blank blot. Big blank body. Develop your brains very good early, as a lot of these things, they fall off later. Uh, this one's quite bad if it's not broke. Maybe it has a place in the item deck, but I just think there's better things you can do um, with, especially with an uninkable card. Although, again, it says any item, so we'll definitely get stronger as more stuff gets put into the game. And Let It Go is like a mini Hades effect. Can be inked itself, which is great. Can be sung, which is great. And just get something off the field, which is absolutely what you need sometimes. One jump ahead of the bread line. One swing ahead of the sword. Grandma Talia sings what she can afford. And that's everything. If it's perfect in the ramp plan, turn two on this deck, you want to put out Grandma Talia, and turn three, you want to have her sing this and then put out your Mickey, and you're going to ramp, ramp, ramp. Never seen work together. <coughs> Seems a bit of a waste of a, a card to spend a card from hand simply to give something support, which then requires that you have a something that can quest that then has another something that can attack. So think about that. Think of all the the steps you need for this card to be worth it. You have to have the card in hand. You have to have a character that can quest this turn that can then give its attack power to another character that then that character can use that attack power for something. You need all those conditions to be true for this card to be worth anything. Silly. Coconut Basket I thought was going to be really good when I first played the game because it's like it's infinite heal, right? Every time you play something, you heal, you heal, you heal. But I actually think Dinglehopper is a little better. It's one cheaper. It doesn't require you to have to bring in a new character to heal. And again, as we've said, healing just isn't that great in general. Eye of the Fates is really good, especially with the aerial with the bell. Uh, this is where the one lore can matter, that sometimes Eye of the Fates is just enough to push you over that hump uh, versus like just losing one lore. And it's repeatable, so you can do it over and over again. It's quite good. Uh, Fishbone Quill, again, really fits into the ramp hand. Uh, I do like that you can ink uninkable cards. That is cool. So, yeah, this one I like. I, I don't know if it's really my play style because it tends that your hand, hand tends to empty out, but it, it, it's cool. At least it's got a place. Golden Flower, again, terrible. Okay, in theory, yeah, one to heal three is great, except you banish it, and then you can only use it a single time. So, just a bad card. Uh, and then Scepter of Arendelle, I've never really seen anyone use it for the support aspect. Uh, I have seen someone use it in the aerial item list. That it's just a cheap item you can put out, which is great. And, and look at this. So this is a repeatable item you can do every turn to give any character support. Or you can play work together. I mean, they're the same cost, but this one you can do as much as you want. This one you do once. Why? Why would they print both of these cards in the same set? I don't get it. All right, and last but certainly not least, Steel. Definitely one of the stronger elements. I think I'll probably try to rank them here at the end. Uh, Aladdin's just blank. Beast is very good, especially if you're playing against like Amethyst and they have the mirror, an item they plan to exploit a lot. Beast just gets it out of there. Very good. Hook, I mean, yeah, it abuses fire the cannons. I don't know, did this need to be uninkable? Like that's, that's a lot of deck slots to de dedicate to that. Fire the cannons is already uninkable. Maybe they were afraid of too much <laughs> fire the cannons abuse. I mean, maybe it would have been too strong, but I don't really see anyone use this. This hook is, is fine for a one drop. Him only having one attack on, on defense is a little unfortunate, but he challenges for two, so that's fine. 
this hook I saw once. I mean, he's fine. He didn't really do much. Uh, Cerberus is blank. Donald is he fits in with the bodyguard theme. He's a musketeer, so I like that. He gives them evasive, so they can challenge evasive, which sometimes is relevant. Uh, but for the most part, you're just there because he's a bodyguard. Gantu is insane to me that he's a super legendary. Like he's just so expensive. He doesn't quest for that much. His body's great, but it's so specific. If it just said like they can't challenge at all, I would understand why this is an eight cost with no shift. But especially when you have things like <laughs> Dragonfire and be prepared running around where you can pay eight ink to get this guy down only for bloop and he's gone immediately. Yeah, so cards a very big disappointment. Goons are normal. Hans is great. Hans is so th that this is again a point where him the little one damage can matter, and it's a really good combination with things like Tinkerbell or the cannons or grab your sword or all that. Andy quests for two, so like yeah, he's really good. His stats are just a hair under curve, being a four cost, but you wouldn't want him any higher because you want to be able to get rid of this guy. Uh, Hercules is, is good, just a solid bodyguard. Really good to do on turn three. I usually do that after my Lilo Simba opening follow up with Hercules. Hans is blank. Kronk is blank. All sixes. This Lilo is blank, but it's a nice, cheaper two cost quester. Uh, Maui again, 888. Eight, eight. Three cost, nice, but just a big blank body. There's better things to do, generally. Mickey, our final musketeer. I do wish. I, under, I don't understand why his effect doesn't work for himself. He should attack for three. It shouldn't be other Musketeer characters get plus one, because that only affects Donald and Goofy. Sure, if they had more in the future, they could change that, but I think he should have he should have either been base 3-7 and have this text, or he should have just affected himself with his own thing, and like it makes him a 3-7. Nonetheless, a bodyguard that quests for two, not bad, and the seven body is very nice, as it can take quite a bit to get through him if they have to challenge him. Eric is really good. I actually like Eric a little better than Hook, just because he has three defense, so... He can last just a little bit longer. Uh, this Simba is fine. I don't value him as much as my friend does, but it does help you, you know, go through your deck a bit more. And there's not much card draw in the game right now outside of Amethyst, so it's good. Big Simba, I like quite a bit. Again, he attacks for eight, so he can actually take out an Ursula uh, in one shot if he needs to, and he can hit evasives, which is very, very cool. And he quests for two, so it's not bad if you have nothing to hit. I do like this Simba a lot. My only my only uh, complaint is seven is a little expensive. There's some games where it's like by the time he comes out, the game's already over. My opponents rush me down. So a little expensive, but at least can, he can be inked. Unlike his lower, weaker counterpart, who is a five cost uninkable with a th only three attack, which is especially terrible considering they want you to challenge with him. Uh, so if he banishes something in a challenge, you would gain one lore. It's, it's, I can't help but just compare him to the hero Aladdin that like, yes, I know technically that Aladdin's seven, but the whole point of that Aladdin is to shift him on at five. So if you think of it in that term, five, that Aladdin attacks for two more and he gains additional lore and he's inkable. It's like, it's, maybe that's not the right comparison, but it's the comparison I make and I think this card's terrible. Maybe Starkey will get better if we get more captains. Right now, he just seems kind of bleh. Takai, again, is like, it's kind of okay, but again, compare it to Aladdin. <laughs> you have to banish another character, but it can't be shifted. So whereas Aladdin can shift and kind of cheat out that rush or that haste, if you will, Takai has to wait till turn six, which means she has to wait till turn seven to actually challenge. So, <laughs> uh, and then and then just a five, five I, I don't know, yeah. I don't know, not digging this one at all. And she's one of the super legendaries, like, oof, oof. Uh, Tinkerbell is quite great, though, uh, especially if you can shift her on turn four with this one. One to the whole board is like, it's okay. On its own, that tends to not do a whole lot, but sometimes it is. Sometimes it's just enough that the way the characters work out, having one extra damage means now your 2-2 can take out that 2-3 Simba bodyguard normally wouldn't be able to. And if you can shift this on turn four, she can immediately challenge which then means you kill something and you hit something else for two. And she's got five bodies, so it's a little harder for people to deal with her. Cards just great. If you're playing Steel, you definitely need to be playing Tinkerbell. Uh, this little Tinkerbell is again perfect for the shift. I Her battle plans is nice too, as a way to kind of help you dig through the deck. Sucks it makes you discard. I don't know. She's kind of weird because generally I don't want to exert her because I don't want her to get challenged. 
because I'm trying to shift around to the big one, but if you have nothing else to do, it is nice as just an option that, okay, I can dig deeper if I need to. This card is very interesting. I can show you the world. I'll give you seven new cards. Obviously, the card is great, especially if you can sing it. Being able to just exert a character, get an entire hand of fresh cards, and then you have the ink to play them that turn. Turn five, six, whatever it is. That is great. However, there are times my opponents have used a whole new world on me and it has cost them the game because I was just top decking and, and they literally filled up my hand again to let me do whatever they want. So there are times I wonder if this card is actually a bit of a trap and that it actually hurts you more than it helps you. But there's no denying that getting a full fresh hand of cards when you're also top decking is great. Sometimes I just wonder about it helping your opponent, though. Break is, in theory, fine, but I think Beast being in the same element kind of makes it in invalid. Like, very rarely are you going to need to banish an item on turn two. The, the only thing I can think of that you would even want to do that for is Ursula's Cauldron. <sighs> Excuse me. If they have the mirror, they can't use it till turn four anyway, at which point you, you've got the Beast coming out next turn potentially to get rid of it and that was their whole turn so like again i think it's fine i think it's just i don't think there's a reason to play this when you have the beast because you break an item and you get a body after it uh what was the other super legendary in here was it the simbas i just i noticed it was to oh it was gantry that's right yeah no wonder i couldn't remember fire the cannons is great uninkable yeah but it's one cost just two to anything makes stampede look like a joke which it is uh yeah just great spot removal that's what you want grab your swords is a hair expensive? Obviously, the effect is great. Just two damage to everything on your opponent's board. It's the closest thing that we have to a board wipe next to uh, be prepared. Granted, five is expensive. And sometimes, depending on their board, two damage just feels like nothing. It's like, okay, that's not even close to doing what I want to do. However, if they are playing a lot of smaller cards and it's early, again, a tink doing one to the board and two, that's three to the whole board. Quite nice. So it is a good card. I think it could easily be replaced in the future, though, as long as we get anything that's just a little more efficient than it. And, again, two damage compared to two more ink, be prepared, just regardless of anything else, wipes the board clean. It does seem weak in comparison to that card, but given what we have in the pool, this is obviously a good card to have in steel. Ransack, I think, is absolutely terrible. I took it out of my starter as quickly as I could. If you plussed on it, like if you drew three and discarded two you would end up with the same amount of cards in hand right so if you have three cards in hand and ransacks one of them and you pitch the ransack you draw two you discard two now you have two cards in hand so you go down a card in hand when you use this you dig deeper into the deck but it's so early too that like unless unless your hand is just terrible that like you've just got nothing but expensive cards and you can use this to filter them out. That's the only specific situation I could see that in. But I think it should have said draw three, discard two. And then you would end up with the same amount of cards in your hand. Maybe that would have been too strong. But I think it's worthless right now. Smash is good. It's just like fire the cannons. It technically only does one more damage versus needing two more ink. So if you look at it from that point, the rate is terrible. But it can be inked versus not inked. Again, this is, I think, this is good design. This one is very strong, but can't be inked. This one a little more expensive. Hits a little harder, but can but can be inked. So I think Smash is solid. Beast Mirror I actually like quite a bit. Uh, it's, it's another Mirror card. I guess the Mirror cards are the ones that draw. But in Steel, again, it's very easy to get into top deck mode in this game. So it's really easy to have these turns. You top deck, even if you can't play the card, as long as you can ink it, throw it right into the inkwell. Your hand is now empty. Beast Mirror draws you something. So I do really like it in my Musketeer Steel Amber list. Uh, frying Pan, however, is terrible. Chosen character can't challenge. I, I guess it's great if they have Aladdin specifically. Uh, <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I, I know they didn't. why they didn't want this to be repeatable because they didn't want you to be able to just lock someone out from ever challenging you. But I, I wonder if, if it would have been better if it was more expensive but repeatable. Maybe that would have been too strong, especially in the late game. But either way, in its current state, it's just not worth it. Uh, Musketeer Tabard, 
I'm incredibly partial to this card because, again, I use it in my Musketeer Bodyguard deck. And with Beast Mirror, it just gives you so much card draw that if, if, if I have Hercules and Simba and Goofy and they've got to get through all three of them and every time one of those cards dies, not only am I getting whatever I get out of their challenging, I get to draw off of them as well. I absolutely love it. That being said, four uninkable is probably a little too much. I think it could have easily cost three or it could have been inkable. I don't think it's that great since it is limited to cards with the bodyguard text and they specifically specifically have to be banished so if they get bounced your hand or like hades hades totally shits on my deck when i'm playing this because he just junks it right into my inkwell <clears throat> that sucks but beyond that i do really like it and it should only get stronger as more cards come out with the bodyguard text last but certainly not least the plasma blaster Three uninkable, that's no fun, and then another two to use it. Uh, that being said, I did see someone who got out three of these and were just pew, 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 just like blasting down my board, and it was one of the most enjoyable times. I, I don't think I ended up losing. I think I still won, but like when I thought I was going to lose, I was like, all right, this is pretty cool. It kind of made me want to do it. So cute little card, on-demand damage for any characters can be quite nice. I don't know if it's worth building around. If it was inkable, I think it definitely would be, but there you go. So there we go. That is a complete set review for Chapter 1. These are just the enchanted cards as well as some uh, promos. I think in order, Amethyst is absolutely the strongest element. I don't know why it has access to so many different keywords. Card draw is insane. Easily followed by Ruby, which is why Amethyst Ruby is the strongest deck in the game right now. Uh, third would probably be Emerald. So I'll make sure I give each one of their, yeah, so Amethyst first, Ruby second, Emerald third, definitely. And then probably, yeah, it's got to be Steel, I think, for fourth. I think Steel, you could even make a pretty good argument for third over Emerald, just kind of depending on what you're going to do, because Steel does have much better removal, which is nice, but I think a lot of the bodies in Emerald are better, and I think they got better big cards. Uh, and then probably, I think I'll give Amber a slight nod as five over Sapphire. Because I love the item stuff in Sapphire, but the ramp stuff, just it's just not there right now. Maybe it will be in the future. We, one can only hope. Anyway, let me know what you think. Uh, what is your favorite... I guess element's not the right word. Gem, color. What is your favorite color, color combination? Are there some cards that I totally missed the boat on that you actually think, no, those are crazy strong, or no, you're wrong, they're terrible? Let me know in the comments. Appreciate you watching, and until next time, take care.